very hard to appoint Richard Ravitch, who's lieutenant governor last year, taking the case all the way up to the state's highest court and winning there in a 4-3 vote. Now, as Josh just mentioned, Patterson tasked his new LG with coming up with a long-term plan for addressing the state's fiscal crisis. Ravitch was quickly cast as New York's Cassandra, meeting with whoever would listen to him to insist that whatever they believed about the budget mess, the reality was actually much worse. And even now, though he's a bit on the sidelines, he still has quite a lot to say. And he joins us from New York City this evening. Lieutenant Governor, thank you very much for your time. Delighted to be here. Uh, so you are seeing the talks go on in Albany. What is being missed, in your opinion, from your vantage point in New York City? I think the con concern that I have is I've heard nothing about how you get to structural balance. I've heard only about how you get through this year and, <clears throat> and not how you get through next year and the year after. Because the truth is uh, the, the gap between growing expenditures and growing revenues is widening. And I tried in my recommendations to suggest a way of dealing with that so that the public wouldn't be put through uh, this kind of process every year. But perhaps most importantly of all, uh, this course is not sustainable uh, unless there is a mechanism for ensuring that the state at some point in the near future achieves real structural balance, which means that their expenditures have to be equal to their recurring revenues. Okay, so tell me then, what do you think is lacking? If it's true, in fact, that you might be facing an even bigger budget deficit next year if the state does not get adopt a long-term means, as you've said, for dealing with that, what's lacking? The will, the political backbone, a fear of voters? What is the problem? If it, if a lack of understanding? <clears throat> Well, I, I think in fairness, there are two parts to it. One, as I have said uh, before, I have less rectitude about the political process than most people do, because in fairness, this is the first time people who run for office have to deal with the kind of economic contraction that's taking place. When people run for office, they tell their constituents properly so what they could do for them. Uh, and try to do the most they can. That's their job. That's what democracy is all about. And all of a sudden, the combination of factors, the growth in, in mandated expenditures, the reduction in revenues, the uncertainties of federal aid, have, have put the people who are elected to office to make these decisions in a position where they have to make very, very substantial reductions. And that's very tough. So that's problem number one. Problem number two is that during these months of, of trying to arrive at a consensus about how to cut state expenditures by billions and billions of dollars, uh, people lost sight as time passed of the underlying problem of about the future. What are the, what are the implications of what you do this year for next year and the subsequent years? And I don't think there's any real public debate about this. I've never heard this issue debated on the floor of either House or the legislature. And I, very frankly, I haven't heard much of it being discussed on the media either. Well, before and we, therefore, we... the public, before the public, uh, uh, the public can't expect to have an understanding of it unless it's discussed. And there should be people with differing points of view debating these issues in public. So the governor actually said you came up with a plan that talks about borrowing to pay off some of the deficit but with some rather stringent reforms regarding the budget um, putting together putting some uh, re requirements in that would mandate changes so you can't just keep borrowing to cover operating expenses which is a pretty uh, controversial thing to do the governor has changed his tune a couple of times on borrowing so uh, a do you think are you frustrated by his uh, first, his determination that borrowing, his rejection, if you will, of your suggestion of, of borrowing, period, whatever stringent reforms are attached to it, are you, does that frustrate you? Well, uh, no, uh, it doesn't frustrate me. Let, let me explain. Uh, unfortunately, my plan got characterized as a borrowing plan, even though I made it very clear that I have never believed 
that borrowing to cover operating deficits is a good idea. <clears throat> what I said back in early March was simply that I thought it would be very difficult <clears throat> to cut that amount of money out of the budget and that they may very well end up with having to borrow. And if they were going to borrow, it should only be under the circumstances as it was for the city of New York in 1975, <clears throat> where the city would never have had an opportunity to recover economically, to end up with a budget balance three years later if they didn't have some transitional borrowing. I would much, and every one of the recommendations could be accomplished if there were no borrowing at all. The only thing the borrowing referred to was if it had to be, then you could have an enforcement mechanism for the other parts of the plan, which had... Do you think then, just, just before you continue, uh, do you think then perhaps if no borrowing had been even, if no suggestion of borrowing had even been mentioned, because once you talk about borrowing, that sort of almost makes lawmakers feel, oh, borrowing, well, that's a way that we might get out of this. It, without all of the stringent reforms that you're talking about, had perhaps maybe <clears throat> we never should have talked about it in the first place? Well, Liz, uh, the truth is that the state has been borrowing for years, that the state closed budget deficits in the last 10 years with between 20 and $25 billion of one-shots, asset sales and borrowings. So believe me when I tell you, I didn't have to educate anybody as to the possibility of borrowing. <laughs> and borrowing is not the center point of what I am saying. I, I share the governor's view. Borrowing is not a good solution here. The critical part of what my recommendations were were that the state has to go to a gap budgeting system, which mm -hmm. means it's an accrual counting system. It means that your recurring revenues get matched with your recurring expenditures. Second of all, I said that they had to get to structural balance within five years because the current course is not sustainable. And third of all, I said you need an independent fiscal monitor. Not to do anything, doesn't have power to make any decision, to have any impact on how much of the budget is uh, taxes and how much of it is budget cuts. It only has the ability to s proclaim whether the budget is balanced or not. No. And what's happening, I'm P sorry. No, please continue. Finish the thought. And all over the democratic world, the free world, as every country, including our own, is facing the same dilemma that the state of New York is facing, S expenditures on human services are rising a lot faster than revenues. Same problem that we read about that's going on in Greece. Then, okay, and, let, let and, me just ask you, particularly because you bring up Greece, and you're watching what's happening. I mean, what, now we've seen almost 70% of the budget occur, uh, actually achieved through these um, these emergency expenditure, uh, these emergency extender bills, rather that the.